Today's lesson we're going to deal with is called um, Our Stolen Legacy. Our Stolen Legacy. And dealing with a history of um, white supremacy, so called white supremacy. I would open up with a, a video. Many of our people want to go to uh, the land of uh, Jerusalem, the land of Israel, like we have. Uh, go back. Pull up uh, Ben Ami. We have a group of brothers and sisters in Damona, Israel. In Tide, they call themselves the African Hebrew Israelites. Led by a man called Ben Ami. Type in African Hebrew Israelites. That's uh, Ben Carter there on the side. His name is, he changed his name to Ben Ami. He led, um, started off with uh, about 300, 400 he led to Libya and from Libya. This was during the 60s, late 60s. They went to Israel and the state of Israel placed them in the desert of Demona. It was near a reactor. It's a wasteland. Um, his plight there involved, they started their own schools, which is admirable. They grew their own food, foods, admirable. You cannot knock that at all. That's what we need to be doing on this side. However, uh, when it came to health and dental, they were not able to take care of themselves in that venue. So he struck a deal with the Israeli government to place his boys, the males, in the Israeli army to fight against the Palestinians. Correct. Go on the far right. If y'all blow that up. So that y'all know this is what happened. They struck a deal with the Israeli government for dental benefits and health benefits to help them. Uh, putting the boys in the military. I didn't agree with that. Could have stayed over here. Uh, let's go back, go back down. Let me see some more. All right. In recent years, there's been an influx of real Africans to the land of uh, Israel. I want to show you all a video because many of you, like over here in this country, we really believe that the so-called Jews are somewhat nice to us and they are very tolerant like we look on Eastern Parkway. I don't know how many of y'all saw that foolish uh, Labor Day parade. They're out there too dancing and feeding chicken to the Negroes. They had uh, uh, kosher jerk chicken. Let me show you a video. Now, before we play the video, uh, understand that these are well, the Africans that are going to the land of Israel within the past few years are the Sudanese and other Africans. Uh, right, the Egyptians, ancient Egyptians. I'm no fan of theirs, but what I want you to see is how the so-called Jews, Amalek, deals with them. Well, let's watch the video. Since 2006, about 60,000 Africans have arrived in Israel on harrowing treks through the Sinai Desert, fleeing poverty, persecution, ethnic cleansing, and genocide. As refugee camps across Africa fill up and Europe closes its gates to asylum seekers, Israel became the next best option, accessible by land and said to be a developed democracy. But instead of providing them with safe haven, Israel is both refusing to grant them any benefits and denying them the ability to work legally to support themselves. Faced with poverty and exploitation, a new nightmare unfolded. I'm 
פסיכופטים, אנשים שרק מחפשים איך לרצוח אותי בעיניים שלהם, אבל אף אחד לא מאמין לנו, אנחנו גזענים, אנחנו גזענים כדי לרצות לשמור על החיים שלנו ועל השפיות שלנו, אז אני גאה בלהיות גזענית, אני גאה בלהיות גזענית, אם אני גזענית בשביל לשמור על החיים שלי, אז אני גאה While protests raged in the streets against the presence of asylum seekers from Africa, the man who held the power to determine their fate, Deputy Prime Minister Eli Ishai, demanded their expulsion. If they gave me all the tools, and I'm trying to give you all the tools, and it's not easy. If they gave me all the tools without being out of the way, in less than a year, there will not be one in the land of Israel, even one of them. And the few isolated Israelis who dared to protest, like this woman, were met with a harsh backlash. At the anti-African rallies we documented, one figure was ubiquitous, a member of Knesset named Michael Ben Ari. In August 2010, we interviewed him at his Knesset office. יש להם שם בית. מה זה גירוש? איזה גירוש? הם שווים הביתה. כל מדינה בעולם מתוקנת הייתה עושה את זה. נהפוך להיות מדינת הגירה, אבל יש כאלה שעוינים את המדינה. ולכן הם רוצים להפוך אותה למדינת אזרחי כל העולם. נביא לפה מיליון אפריקאים, חצי מיליון פיליפינים, שניים שלושה מיליון סינים, ושלום על ישראל. למה זה מאיים שיהיו פה מיליון אפריקאים? זה מאיים כי לא תהיה פה מדינה יהודית. המדינה שלנו, המדינה שלנו, המדינה שלנו, תקשיב, המדינה שלנו שונה ממדינות אחרות. המדינה שלנו היא מדינה יהודית, מדינה יהודית ודמוקרטית. זה איזון מאוד מאוד לא פשוט, זה יכול להיות תחתי סאטרה במקומות מסוימים. זאת אומרת, דברים סותרים זה את זה במקומות מסוימים. במידה ותביא לפה מיליון אפריקה, היא תחדל מלהיות יהודית. היא תחדל מלהיות יהודית. אנחנו נלחמים. לדוגמה, בתופעה של התבוללות בעולם, ישנה התבוללות של 70-80 אחוזים במקומות מסוימים בעולם. זאת אומרת, עם ישראל הולך לאיבוד. לי עם ישראל יקר. בן ארי is known for leading nationalist marches through Arab neighborhoods inside Israel, where he antagonizes, intimidates and menaces Arab citizens. On the holiday of Chanukah, בן ארי led a rally at Levinsky Park. a public space in South Tel Aviv that has become home to many Africans who were denied work permits and the ability to afford housing. Earlier in the year, at an anti-African rally in Tel Aviv that was attended by thousands, Ben Ari was joined by lawmakers from the governing Likud party and other mainstream politicians. <laughs> Minutes after the rally, a thousand Israelis rioted, attacking African homes and businesses and assaulting any African they found in the street. Here is footage shot by one of the participants in the riot, a supporter of Mikhail Ben Ari. Days later, Yulia Shmuelov Belkovich, at the time a legislator from the centrist opposition party Kadima, called for Israelis who advocate for the Africans to be locked in prison camps alongside the asylum seekers. According to the Israeli Coalition Against Racism, 
incidents of racist incitement by Israeli public figures doubled in 2012. In many cases, the targets of their hateful invective were not Palestinians, but African migrants. Chief among those targeting the presence of Africans in Israel is a core of hundreds of state-appointed rabbis, including some of the premier religious authorities in Israel, who issued a letter forbidding Jews from renting apartments to the African asylum seekers and any other non-Jews. Here is a rabbi that we filmed, one of many who labored to promote the religious edict. <laughs> Though painted as an existential threat, the fact remains that Africans in Israel pose no known security threat to the country. None of them have engaged in acts of terrorism against Israel, and very few, if any, hold anti-Israel opinions. Most are eager to contribute to the prosperity and well-being of the country. So why are they being demonized? And why is the government so determined to deport them? Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu previously warned that if the level of Arab citizens of Israel exceeds 30% of the general population, Israel could become a binational state and would lose its Jewish character. With tens of thousands of non-Jewish African migrants living in Israel by 2010, Prime Minister Netanyahu warned that their presence increases the looming threat to the Jewish character of the state. אנחנו הצלחנו לבלום את הכניסה של המסתננים מאפריקה לישראל, אחרי שהיינו באיום של כניסה של מאות אלפים. החודש לא נכנס מסתנן אחד לערי ישראל. זה כבר כמה חודשים שאנחנו משיגים את התוצאה הזאת. בחודש הקרוב אנחנו נשלים את בניית הגדר לאורך גבול סיני, ועכשיו אנחנו עוברים לשלב השני, וזה השלב של החזרת המסתננים שכבר נמצאים כאן. Already, the Israeli Knesset has amended the Anti-Infiltration Act it passed in 1954 to prevent Palestinian refugees from returning to their property. Under the new version of the law, non-Jewish migrants can be arrested on site and held in prison without trial for three years or more before being deported. To hold the migrants and asylum seekers before deporting them, Israel's government has built what it calls an accommodation center in the Negev Desert. Blueprints of the center reveal that it will be, in fact, the largest prison of its kind in any industrialized nation. Currently, about 2,000 Africans languish in the detention center in what human rights groups describe as substandard conditions. This footage we shot outside the prison shows how vast it is. A comprehensive look at the interior of the prison camp has never been presented to the general public. Until the Israeli government is able to resolve the crisis, the chaos in the streets continues. This past New Year's Eve, we followed a mob of ultra-nationalists as they marched through South Tel Aviv, demanding the expulsion of non-Jewish Africans. After the march, the ultra-nationalists gathered at the headquarters of Mikhail Ben-Ari's Strong Israel Party, and that's when we were recognized as left-wing journalists. <laughs> Well, all right. You know what? It's very, uh, I'm going to ask you a question, but before I say you get a lot of our people in the Trinity Broadcast Network who take trips to Israel and then give reports about how beautiful it is over there. They do these little seminars. And they, they uh, you got to realize that the government has their people calm down when they send blacks and people from America over there so that they don't see that, that truth side to them. Uh, 
Here's my question. How many of you think what uh, Netanyahu and I'm doing is not even ask a question? I'm gonna tell you. Because you might say, oh, that's not right, that's not right. Why do you, here come. Why do y'all think Netanyahu and the rest of them don't want the Africans over there, other, other than that they're black, other than that? Well, I'll start by saying, if that was us in our land, we would do the same thing. Exactly. Because we, so the main reason they're doing that is so that they don't have to do what the 10 tribes did when they left those lands so they wouldn't be influenced by all those doctrines, all that stuff, so that what they could keep the laws. What? All the different religions and the stuff Sudanese that the Sudanese are what primarily? They're Arabs. Muslim. 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 They that's are what Islamic. Islamic. Muslim. They're Islamic. Now, so that's going to creep they, in there. Very good. Have a seat. Y'all going to take me somewhere else. Very good. <laughs> you got to remember, they're at war with the Palestinians, right? Mm -hmm. The Palestinians are what? Muslim. 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 Islamic. They are blowing themselves up, right? Now you got a whole 30,000 Africans who are sympathetic to the Palestinians in their countries. They look around, what the hell is this? They gonna start blowing stuff up here. We got to get them out of our land. That's why they use the word infiltrators. That's why they use the word infiltrators, that's right. Now, here's my next question. Cause I see some of y'all on the street, y'all teach the Bible, but y'all run from this question. Did the white man give us the Bible? <coughs> Brothers are shook up. They don't know how to answer that. See, very few hands went up. Where's the confidence? An Egyptologist Negro, these dummies, I've seen them go to the camps and say, y'all reading from the white man's book. The white man gave y'all that book. Is that correct? Mm, who do I want to try? Jaleo. Let's try it. He gave it to us on doing slavery, but he didn't write the book. He gave it to us in slavery, he didn't write the book. I'm not going to shoot your answer down. Have a seat. Let me hear somebody else. He wasn't comfortable. I, I'm not Just, comfortable with no, that. No, 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 no. He wasn't comfortable with the white man gave us the Bible. He had to add, he had to add what he had to add to it. Uh-huh. Because it, it bothers us. We don't want to think that way. That's yeah. why we run from the questions. Don't run from the question. It's an easy question. Very easy. Apari, let me hear you. White man absolutely not gave us the Bible. Yes. Absolutely. What did he say? Not. You said that the white man gave us the Bible. Yeah. yeah you, yes or no? No, he didn't. Oh, okay. okay. Why do you say that? Why do I say that? Because yeah. first and foremost, the scripture says, okay, that first and foremost, Psalms 140, 147, 19 and 20, says mm -hmm. this is not for other nations but us, number one. Okay. Number two, Psalms 50 clearly says, why does the wicked have to do with the God in the Bible. Yeah. Mm. Okay? Yeah, he's speaking the story. And number three, 12 years of slave proved that the reason why the so-called blacks hate and uh, say that is because the slave masters used the Bible, like for example, Luke 12, like they showed in the movie, mm -hmm. to say that the servants, they're the servants, and that the masters are the white man, right. and they are supposed to obey if not they're worthy of stripes, which they were referring to the whip. Mm, very good. See, I like his answer. The answer is no. He did not give us the Bible. But he re listen to my words, he reintroduced it in slavery. Now, he pulled the scripture. Give me Psalms 147, 19. Let's get to start. Are y'all all right? I saw y'all, some of y'all were sweating. Yeah, tissues are all. Is that the white man's book? Yeah, he gave that to us? Hmm. He reintroduced it to us. Because hmm. if the question would have been, did he give it to us in slavery? Then you might have done you would have a different answer. Y'all all right? You gotta realize when a Negro on the street, or even a quote unquote alleged right. Negro scholar, you gotta be careful. Even them Negro scholars, you gotta they're not they're not true scholars. <laughs> right. You brothers that know the scriptures, you are the real true scholars. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Psalms 147, please. 19 and 20. I want to start there. Wait! Yeah, yeah, start there. Psalms, chapter 147, verse 19. He showeth his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. 
He hath not dealt so with any nation. And as for his judgments, they have not known them. So what does that prove? That the Most High only gave the Bible, his holy word, to the Israelites. He did not give no other nation his word. Now you might say to yourself, but we just saw a video. Somebody, not you in here, but maybe somebody with, online will be saying, the white man that claims to be a Jew, he got the scriptures. Hmm. Let's go, let's deal with that for a second. I'm going to go back to that video. Then I'm coming back to that. Get me Ezekiel 36 and 5. Give me that. Let's go there. The white man that claims to be a Jew has the Torah. Okay? He's fighting for his right to be a Jew. Hmm. Is that right? Okay. You have many Christians use scriptures to try and justify 1948. 1948, remember that year? That is the year the League of Nations allowed Israel to become a state, allowed all those Caucasians that came from Germany, Soviet Union, Russia, and they came to the land of Israel. 1948, they were established as a nation, as a state, under the League of Nations. They got authority to do so under the League of Nations. Now, but who are they really? Ezekiel 36 and 5. Ezekiel chapter 36 and verse 5. Therefore thus saith the Lord God, Surely in the fire of my jealousy have I spoken against the residue of the heathen. The word heathen means nations. Go ahead. And against all Idumia. I, he spoke against all Idumia. Idumia is a Greek and Roman word for what, brothers? Edom. E-D-O-M. Edom, which means red. Can you look that up, Abby? I'll pull it up on the screen for us. Under the Zondervan Bible Dictionary, look up Idumia. I know there's some new people in here. Maybe you are unfamiliar with that. Idumia, per, uh, pertain, Greek, pertaining to Edom and King James Version of Old Testament, Idumia. The name used by the Greeks and Romans for the country of Edom. Mark 3, 8, C, Edom. Okay. So, Idumia is the Greek and Roman name for Edom. So now, let's read that again, Isaac. Ezekiel 36, verse 5. Therefore thus saith the Lord God, Surely in the fire of my jealousy have I spoken against the residue of the heathen and against all Idumia, which have appointed my land into their possession. So this is the prophecy that Idumia would appoint the land into their possession. 1948. Go ahead. With the joy of all their heart, with despiteful minds. With despiteful minds, because they did all that despite what the scriptures say. Read. To cast it out for a prey. Right, because now they invite people into the country to get portions of real estate, like the Greek Orthodox, Ethiopia. Okay, but now you see it's got to a point they said, no, we can't take no more. So now, the Bible prophesies that Idumia has appointed the land into their possession. The video we saw is Idumia. Watch this. Give me a Daniel 11. Because they didn't go into the land and say, where Idumians, where Edomites were taking the land. Daniel tells you what they did here. And it's mentioned in a few other scriptures, but I want Daniel 11. You got it, Isaac? Now, yes, sir. You know what's amazing about what we're reading? I need y'all to listen and, and pay attention to this. What's amazing about this is that in the Tanakh, which is the rest of the Hebrew scriptures beyond the Torah, the Torah is known as the first five books. Right. The Tanakh is the rest of the Old Testament. Okay? Inside that Tanakh, they got what we're about to read. So the so-called Jews know about what we're reading. Are y'all all right? Come on. Read Daniel 11, verse 14. Daniel chapter 11 and verse 14. And in, and in those times, there shall many stand up against the king of the south. The king of the south is referring to the Ptolemaic dynasty. Read. But what the, the part I want is this next part. Also the robbers of thy people shall exalt themselves to establish... Stop. Stop reading so fast. Also the robbers of thy people. The robbers of thy people. We just read who robbed us in Ezekiel. Idumia. Read it again. 
And in those times, there shall many stand up against the king of the south. Also the robbers of thy people shall exalt themselves. They shall exalt themselves. Go ahead. To establish the vision. They established the vision that they are the Jews. They have exalted themselves and established the vision as the Jews, as God's chosen people. But let's read the rest of the prophecy. But they shall fall. But they shall fall. You hear what God prophesies? They shall fall. All that they've done with Channel 7, Channel 4, the major networks, constantly, the movie industry. Uh, uh, what's the name of the movie? Shitless List and uh, what's the deaf girl with the books? What's her name? And the Diary of Anne Frank and uh, God. all that Hitler stuff. <laughs> it's them established. It's constant every year. Right. We are the Jews. We are the Jews. Love us. Be kind to us. We need. We're God's holy people. That's the spirit. TB and the Christians. We gotta stand for Israel. We gotta uh, uh, help me out here. You mean the Holocaust? That's what you were saying earlier. The yeah, that. Holocaust. The whole, yeah, that thing. Uh, we gotta love Israel. They, we gotta. America gotta stand with uh, Israel. Read it again, the second half. Of thy people. The robbers of thy people. Go ahead. Shall exalt themselves. They exalted themselves as the Jews. To establish the vision. They have established the vision that they are the Jews and that that is their land. And if you ask our people on the street, whose land is that? The white man that says he's a Jew. That's their land. Hey, their land. Come on. They even got the president saying. But they shall fall. The Bible prophesies they shall fall. That's what God says. They shall fall. Now, get me Revelation 2.9. No, nope, don't give me before that. Give me Ezekiel. Back to Ezekiel. Let me see what I want. Hang on a second. I'm looking. I'm looking. Uh, Ezekiel 35. Right. Get me Ezekiel 35, and I want to start at verse 9. Ezekiel chapter 35 and verse 9. Listen good. I will make thee perpetual desolation. This is what God, when he said in Daniel they shall fall, here's the further prophecy. That's why Isaiah said precept must be upon precept. Where one prophecy ends, it gets carried over to another prophet. And they continue the thought. Go ahead. And thy cities shall not return. And he shall know that I am the Lord. Because thou hast said, these two nations. Thou hast said these two nations. The two nations is Judah and Israel. Read. And these two countries. These two countries is it, the land of Israel and America. Read. Shall be mine. Shall be mine. Come on. And we will possess it. Whereas the Lord was there. Where it says whereas the Lord was there. Because how? How did they get the land of Israel? Under what name? The Jews. How did they get this country? Under what name? Christians. Christians. They took the, our whole land as the Jews and took this one which belongs to the ten tribes as the Christians. And that's what they did. Now, there's some, I want y'all to listen, there's some historical documents that back up what we just read here. Could you read verse 10 again? Verse 10. Ezekiel 35 verse 10. Because thou hast said these two nations. These two nations, the elder pointed out when he is 100% correct. The two nations, one is Israel, and the other one is where we're at now in the Americas. Are y'all with me? Yes, sir. What did they say? Read on. And these two countries. These two countries. Shall be mine. Shall be mine. And we will possess it. And we will possess them both. Go ahead. Whereas the Lord was there. Whereas the Israelites was there. Now, how do we know that the we already established Israel already? Now, what is the historical document that points that the America is this other land? There's a book called Lost Tribes and the Promised Lands. That's the instant proof. Lost tribes and the promised lands. What were the lands that it was talking about in that book? The Americas. That's where Gad and Reuben and all the Israelites were over here. And who took it? The white man. Y'all got that? That's why that book is now $1,000. There's too much information in there. Go ahead, Elder. Exactly. Come on, verse 11. Verse 11. 
Therefore, as I live, saith the Lord God, I will even do according to thine anger. God said he will do according to their anger. Go ahead. And according to thine envy. And according to thine envy. Because that's what it is, envy. The root of envy is hatred. They've always despised us as being God's chosen people. Go ahead. Which thou has used out of thy hatred against them. That's the proof right there. Go ahead. And I will make myself known among them when I have judged thee. So God prophesies he's going to make himself known among them. The real Israelites, us, our people, when he has judged them. Those that have established the vision and possessed our two lands. Read. And thou shalt know that I am the Lord, and that I have heard all thy blasphemies, which thou hast spoken against the mountains of Israel, saying, they are laid desolate, they are given us to consume. Because remember, we were, we were kicked out of the land by the time of Rome, 70 AD, we fled out of our homeland. That's when it says right there, saying, they are laid desolate, they are given us to consume. Read. Thus with your mouth. Ye have boasted against me, and have multiplied your words against me. I have heard them. Come on. Thus saith the Lord God, when the whole earth rejoiceth, I will make thee desolate. You see that? When the whole earth rejoiceth, I will make thee desolate. Paul says something similar to that. Who, who knows what Paul remembers what Paul said in Thessalonians? When they shall say peace and safety sudden destruction shall come. Read. As thou didst rejoice at the inheritance of the house of Israel, because it was desolate, so will I do unto thee. Thou shalt be desolate, O Mount Seir, and all I do me, even all of it, and they shall know that I am the Lord. So it ain't over. It, ain't, it might look bleak. It might seem desolate, but the most high, what y'all see here and in other camps, the Most High is bringing His Spirit upon us to resurrect, to rise up again. And that's what's happening. And it's a beautiful thing. So now as we're rising up, we have many enemies. Many enemies, and I'm not talking about other nations, that's a given. You've got a question to ask yourself many times, why do our own people stand against this truth? They stand against this truth, A, out of ignorance and hatred of, against God's laws. Because they're the first ones to say, the white man gave us the Bible. Why? Because they don't know no history. So we got to deal with him. Okay, let's wink at the Negro's ignorance. He's stupid again. Let's, let's take it with a grain of salt. Give me Romans 3, 1 to 3. Did the white man give us the book? Let's see what the Bible says about that. When these dummies come up to you, let the Bible speak. It's going, by you letting the Bible speak, guess what it's going to do? It's going to shut down every dumb thought they got. It's going to kill the thought that King James was a white man. It's going to kill the thought that King James is a homosexual. It's going to kill the thought that the white man wrote the Bible. By you letting the Bible speak. You ain't got, don't say nothing. Just read, brother. Watch. Come on. Romans 3 verse 1. What advantage then hath the Jew? Or what profit is there of circumcision? Much every way. Chiefly. Because that unto them, unto them, the Jews, our people, were committed the oracles of God. Was committed the oracles of God. Oracles means words of. The words of God, the writings of God, was given to the Jews. It was not given to all races. Y'all, some of y'all come meet these dumb Christians. The Bible's everybody's book. What scripture's that? The Bible just said, unto them was committed what? The oracles of God. Unto them was committed the oracles of God. So that kills them dumb, dumb Negro thoughts. Come on. But what if some did not believe? What if some of you black brothers and Latin brothers don't believe what we're reading? Don't believe this Bible. That's what it's saying. Go ahead. Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? Meaning, is it going to change anything this Bible says? God forbid. The answer is no. Why? Because the prophecies are in full effect. The prophecies are happening day after day after day, whether you believe it or not. Come on. Yea, let God be true. Let God meaning let the Bible be true. But every man a liar. That's why I don't speak with your own words. Let the Bible speak. Let this an these ancient writings speak for itself. It's going to shut everything down. Give me Baruch 336 in the Apocrypha. Baruch chapter 3 and verse 36. 
He has found out all the way of knowledge. He has found out all the ways of knowledge. And hath given it unto Jacob and his servant. God gave it unto Jacob his servant. Come on. And to Israel his beloved. And to Israel his beloved. You see that all the ways of knowledge was given to us. That's why that lets me know. That lets me have faith that there's nothing we can't do. If we have all this knowledge, we can go way beyond what we see here. Yes, way beyond what we have on the internet. Yes, there's nothing we can do because the Most High has said he's given us all the ways of knowledge. So if you are hindered in this truth, it's because the devil within you is hindering you. Your demonic self. We're going to remind me to touch on that, that black people got is possessed by the devil too. Um, <laughs> First Maccabees chapter 1. Here's the history on this. Now, let's, let's go back historic. See, when these dumb Egyptologists come, oh, I, I can't stand them. You got to love you got, I, See, I, the reason I'm, I got to be patient with them because I was walking that path at one time. So now I thank the Lord that he snatched me off that road to destruction. So that's why I got to be patient with them. So when they come up, I'm going to deal with them until they get too stupid. They don't get crushed. And no, we're not having no debates on the Sabbath, charging nobody. In case anybody's thinking that we're going to defile God's Sabbath for some stupid debate. you got to be insane. First Maccabees chapter 1. You got it, Isaac? Yes, sir. Here's the history about the Bible. This is what the Greeks did. First Maccabees 1, 57. Chapter 1, verse 57. First Maccabees chapter 1, verse 57. Listen good. And wheresoever was found with any any the book of the testament or if any consented to the Lord, the king's commandment was that they should be put, they should put him to death. So anybody the Greeks found with the Bible, the scriptures, they had a law that they should be put to death. That kills the white man gave us, gave us the Bible, you big dummies out there. Read it again. Start at verse 56. This is what we're reading the history of what the Greeks did to the Israelites. Verse 56. And when they had read in pieces the books of the law, which they found, they burnt them with fire. The Greeks did this, read. And wheresoever was found with any the book of the testament, or if any consented to the law, the king's commandment was that they should put him to death. Read. Thus did they by their authority unto the Israelites every month. To as many as were found in the city. That's the history. So did the white man give us the Bible? Hell no. You got to come with the scripture. Hell no, he didn't give it to us. You know what? How in the world, follow me for a second. Because up until the reading and studying of the Bible, I've never had found a book that was so pro-black on the planet Earth. I'm telling you straight up. I have the, this Bible is pro the Israelite. It's pro us, 100 percent. And it is the biggest book that denigrates the white man to the earth, to the vile creature that he is. So why in the world would the Most High? Why in the world would the white man give us a Bible that denigrates him? Because this up until this until the knowledge of this Bible came out, you could not tell the white man anything. We can actually go into this Bible and show him his beginning, show that he ain't nothing. And it tells you that Christ is a black man. Why in the world would a white man give you that? Exactly. Here's another one. Let's get some more. We ain't done. First Maccabees 2.48. First Maccabees chapter 2 and verse 48. Now this is when our forefathers rose up against the Greeks. Go ahead. So they recovered the law out of the hand of the Gentiles. Our forefathers had to fight to get back the Bible, to get back the scriptures. Read. And out of the hand of kings, neither suffered they the sinner to triumph. There was a war. There was a war. The white man was trying to take the Bible and destroy the Bible. We was fighting to keep the book. Now you got here in this year and age the dumb Negro, who's the most uneducated man on the earth. The white, that's the white man's book. Shut up. Humble down, listen, and learn. You don't know nothing. Let's get some more. Chapter 3 now. 1 Maccabees chapter 3, verse 48. 1 Maccabees chapter 3, verse 48. And laid open the book of the Lord, wherein the heathen 
had sought to paint the likeness of their images. So when the white man got the Bible, he started to paint his pictures all in the Bible. Paint his images all in the Bible. Why? Because the white man knows that the eyes access your mind. The eyes are the, what is it? The keys? What are the, the eyes? Windows, are the, to, the windows to the soul. That your eyes is what got access to your subconscious spirit. So you'll look at something, and what? You'll start to, oh, that's next to the book of Maccabees. So Maccabees must be a white man. Oh, look, there's a white image of Jesus. Jesus must be white. Look, over here, next to the book of Isaiah, there's a painting of Isaiah white. Isaiah must be a white man. Yeah, he must be white. Mm-hmm. That's why the white man was painting his images in our records. So now, God, you want to say something? You know what you gotta. You know what you have to realize. If the white man had later painted his images in the Bible, what color were the images in there before he did that? Exactly. Yep. That's why I say our people are asleep, bro. I, it, the, the brain cells just don't work at all. What kind of what what color were the images in the Bible before they did that? Because there's icon uh, pictures that we have showing you that he looked in the book and he was literally painting over the black images in in, in that uh, thing over there. And, uh, in that book by Father Vladimir Ivanov, Russian icon, to show you that. Go ahead, Elder. Now, Deuteronomy 28, 40. Now let's deal with the, the, the dumb Negro who does not know anything saying the white man gave us the Bible. Let's deal with that. He reintroduced the Bible. I'm using that word. Reintroduced the Bible to us. Let's read Deuteronomy 28, 40. I'm going to explain why. I'm going to see who catch on. Hmm. Deuteronomy. Chapter 28, verse 48. I know all you know the scripture, right? Everybody know the scripture? Watch. Let's see. Come on. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemy. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemy. Now, we can bring this verse all the way up to today, but I want to keep it back there in the 1400s, 1500s, 1600s. Let's keep that verse back there. Read it again. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee. In hunger, if you want food, you got to serve your enemy. Go ahead. And in thirst, if you want water or anything to drink, you got to serve your enemy. And in nakedness, and in nakedness, meaning if you want clothes, you got to serve your enemy. And in want of all things, stop right there. And in want of all things, who can fill in the gap? The word want there means lack, in lack of all things. What did we lack? Bezalel. The understanding of God. We had to go to them for that. And our heritage. Yes. You're absolutely 100% right. And we're touching and we're getting to that. But before that, there's something else we lacked. Or well, I'll say after that. You're right. That is the first thing. I'm, I'm going to back up. That is correct. 100%. But there's something else we lacked. Why did we have to go to the white man to learn about, what you say? Learn about our God. Learn about God. Learn about the most. Why did we have to go to him? Uh, to keep us destroyed. I mean, that was the way to control us. No. Uh, Jonah, give him the mic. We lacked the ability to read and write. We couldn't read! We couldn't write! When that white man, that demon destroyed us, he did a uh, uh, total job. He made sure we could not read. We could not write. He destroyed us to a base level, brothers, sisters. So if you can't read, you can't write. You got to go to him for, you wouldn't know about God. So that's why he had no fit. That's why the Negro, with his dumb Egyptology by, you don't know nothing. The white man didn't have to de destroy this book no more. He had a new plan. Why do we got to destroy this book when they can't read? They don't know what this book says. Yep. They don't know they can't read. We've destroyed them. Now, Isaac, read it again. Deuteronomy 28, verse 48. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee, in hunger, meaning food, and in thirst, water, and in nakedness, clothing, and in want of all things. Reading, writing, arithmetic, religion. We had to go to him for everything. Read. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. Until when? Until... He have destroyed thee. So, the yoke of iron came off when we were destroyed as what? As a people, as a nation. He, she said, listen, there's no unity amongst them no more. 
They love us. They got that Willie Lynch on. Oh, he's the brother talking about a, a computer chip. Nigga, you got the Willie Lynch chip in your brain. What the hell is this? You hate your people. You hate yourselves. So the white man said, this, listen, there's no need to destroy. Because remember, the white man, give me that in Psalms 64, is it? About they do a diligent search. I want that one. 64 and 6. Give me that. I'm going to show you what the white man does with ancient records. Why did he destroy? He knew about this book. Psalms chapter 64 verse 6. Listen good. They search out iniquity. They search out all the iniquities from the past. Meaning they search through things historically. The white man ain't like everybody else. Before he makes a move, he does diligent research. Go ahead. They accomplish a diligent search. That's what their archaeologist is about. That's what their road scholars are about. They accomplish diligent searches. They are paid to research. Go ahead. Both the inward thought of every one of them and the heart is deep. Some of y'all think the white man's dumb as hell. Mm -mm. The Bible says the thought of every one of them is deep. There's a spirit in them that causes them to be ten steps ahead of us in everything we do. A good example is when they, during the time of Maccabees, the reason they put the images inside the book, they knew from back then there was a psychological connection between words and images mm -hmm. for them to, over, you know, to, to take over our history. Exactly. So now, our brothers, our sisters who really think they're into some deep Afrocentristic doctrine, they really believe the white man gave us these records. Okay. Get me Jeremiah 14 2. No, let's start at Genesis 2 7. The white man wrote the Bible. Oh, really? Genesis 2 and 7. Come on. Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. What color is the dust of the ground? Wow. So the first man, Adam, was black. I'm going to say it again. The first man, Adam, was black. And where did Eve come from? His rib, his side. So the first woman was black. Get me Jeremiah 14 too. See what I'm doing now? I'm showing the Egyptologist dummies the white man did not write the Bible. You big, ignorant. Sorry, I'm, I'm getting there. I'm going to calm down. I just get annoyed with that. Come on, Isaac. Jeremiah 14, verse 2. Judah mourneth, and the gates thereof language. They are black unto the ground. So the tribe of Judah is black unto the ground, just like the earth that Adam was made from. Give me Job 30. Job 30, 30. The white man wrote the Bible. That's why don't stand out there using your own. Yes, you shot a nigga die with the Bible. Job 30, 30. Come on, Isaac. Job 30, verse 30. My skin is black upon me. So the prophet Job is black. The white man wrote the Bible. Give me Song of Solomon 1 and 5. The white man wrote the Bible. You big dummies. Song of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 5. Come on, Isaac. You know I got a good one for you, don't you? Somebody help Isaac find Song of Solomon. Okay. Song of Solomon, 1 verse 5. I am black, but comely, O ye daughters of Jerusalem. Let's see who wrote that. Read verse 1. Verse 1. The song of songs, which is Solomon. So Solomon says he's black. The white man wrote the Bible. So then you got to sit there and say to the dumb Egyptologist, dumb Negro, why didn't the white man, if he wrote this, Put that the kings of Israel, the first man was white. Caucasian. He didn't do it. Why? Who can figure out now? I'm not going to give you the answer. I think I already gave you the answer. Why did not he, Why didn't he do, it? do it? Why didn't he change all that that we've just read? I'm not a part of him. I need some new hands. Let me have a new hand. There's a new hand with a pen right there. Yes, you with the pen in your hand. Stand up. Why didn't he do it? Like in verse 20, 28 or 48, he was, he was already destroyed. He couldn't read or write. Right. We couldn't read. There was no need for him to 
to go in and alter things we couldn't read, we couldn't write. We were totally destroyed as a people. So they got in their councils. There's no need to change nothing. Leave it the way it is. That shows you how awesome the Most High is. That shows you how awesome the Most High is. The Most High has set up a, has set up a situation where, the, where this white man, he said, you know what, they're so destroyed, I don't even have to mess with them. And not even realizing that's the trick. Mm -hmm. The Most High is an awesome, awesome planner. Bro. Yo, so doesn't be. the scripture say the pride of your heart has deceived you? Oh, you, that's how it's going to go. <laughs> now, I want to add on to those color scriptures that you brought up. Okay. Listen up. I'm, now, check this out. Give me just a couple of them. I'm going to be quiet for a while. No, you ain't, but it's all right. <laughs> Genesis 25. Give me that. The white man wrote the Bible. Okay, we're going to find out. Genesis 25, 25, Isaac. Come on, give it to him. Genesis 25, 25. Genesis chapter 25, verse 25. The white man wrote the Bible. <laughs> Come on. And the first came out red. All over, like in hairy garment. And the first came out red because everybody before that was brown. That's the reason why it was necessary for it to be recorded that it came out red because he's different. 30th verse. Verse 30. And Esau said to Jacob, feed me, I pray thee, with that same red pottage, for I am faint. Therefore was his name called Edom. So his name was changed to Edom, which means red. Give me Obadiah. Obadiah, first verse. Obadiah. Obadiah, chapter 1, verse 1. The vision of Obadiah, thus saith the Lord God, concerning Edom. Concerning Edom, give me the fourth verse. Verse 4. Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle, and though thou set thy nest among the stars. So who are we reading about? The white man. That's clear. We just that, we're reading about the white man. The white man wrote the Bible. Give me Revelation chapter twelve, verse nine. <laughs> the third verse and then the ninth verse. The white man wrote the Bible. Listen. Revelation twelve and three, chapter twelve and verse three. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon. The red dragon is Edom. Give me the ninth verse. Verse 9, and the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil. So it's obvious the white man didn't write the Bible that's calling him the devil. That The Bible, the exactly. Bible is calling him the devil, straight up. Exactly. So he did the white man wrote the, the Bible. You stupid as hell, you believe that garbage. Now let's show you a clip about their pride. Abby, I'll show them the next clip now. This is from a movie entitled, a series called Hell on Wheels. Wives, submit your, yourselves to your husbands as if fitting in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and do not be harsh with them. Children, obey your parents and everything, for this pleases the Lord. Slaves, obey your earthly masters in everything. Not only when their eyes on you and to carry the favor, but with sin, Sin. Sincerity. Sincerity of the heart in referring to the Lord. Huh. Oh, I don't believe it. How old are you, boy? I ain't been on you, sir. Pay up, gentlemen. It's dangerous, you know, teaching them to read. Hmm. That's true. Matt Turner was taught to read. Nonsense. Let me show you. Boy, can you explain to me the meaning of what you just read? No, master. See? It's like a parrot reciting Shakespeare. Well done, Elam. Well done.
Now I have heard the groaning of the Israelites whom the Egyptians hold in slavery. And I have remembered my promise. Say unto the children of Israel, I am the Lord. And I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians, and I will rid you out from under their bondage. And I will redeem you with a stretched out arm, and you shall know that I am the Lord. Now that's so heavy because the boy could understand. But he told the white man was so confident that he did an excellent job of destroying us, saying that he couldn't understand what he was reading. Y'all didn't pick that up. Yeah, he wasn't stuttering. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Y'all didn't pick that up. That's, that's how our four parents did. Right. That's a good point. The boy wasn't stuttering when he went in with the blacks, but in front he was like, like he couldn't read. Give him the mic. Who got the mic up here? Not only that, he closed the Bible and then recited it. Exactly. Yeah. Recited it, right? Verbatim, right? Right. right after he read it. Yep. Heavy point. I got it in the mouth. Mm -hmm. So that's heavy. So the white man, his, like the scripture, the pride of your heart has deceived you. When the Bible said what we read in Deuteronomy 28 about we have to serve him for the want of all things, we had to go to him to learn the Bible. We had to go to him to learn how to read the Bible, learn everything from this man. So there was no, his arrogance said, no, we don't need to rewrite this, destroy it no more. They, we did an excellent job in destroying them. From there, let's go to Isaiah 29 and 13. The white man wrote, you got, see that, there's no, these people that say that thing, just shut them down with the Bible. Just read the color scriptures to them and say, nigga, shut up. You don't know nothing. The white man wrote the Bible. Isaiah chapter 20. Wait, wait, wait. Give me Leviticus 2013. I'm sorry. I got to read this. <laughs> Leviticus 2013. See, my brother, because King James was a homosexual and he wrote this book with Shakespeare, my brother, because you see the word shake over here in this verse, and then it says spear down here, Shakespeare. Well, brother, I see another one. I see dumb over here and ass over here. <laughs> <laughs> Leviticus 20:13, The book of Leviticus, chapter 20, verse 13. If a man also lie with mankind, as he lieth with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. They shall surely be put to death. Don't you think if King James wrote the Bible, he would have taken that out if he was a homosexual? You big dummies. Stop listening to these Negroes. They are dumb as hell. They don't know nothing. They don't know. It's all rhetoric with them. They have not taken the time to read the Bible. And when they sit down to read it, they're trying to find dis uh, what's the word? discrepancies or contradictions. That's what they're looking for. Why? Because they hate God's laws. That's why. Isaiah 29, 13. The book of Isaiah, chapter 29, verse 13. Wherefore the Lord said, For as much as this people draw near me with their mouth, and with their lips do honor me. That's when they say, I love the Lord, I love the Lord. God Almighty, I love the Lord. Come on. But have removed their heart far from me. Meaning they won't do nothing the Bible says. They won't do one Lord as the Bible says. That's what that means. Okay. And their fear toward me. This is, is the part we wanted. Is taught by the precept of men. Our fear towards God is taught by the precepts of men. What man taught us the Bible? The white man. He reintroduced it to us in slavery. When he took it from us and brought us, destroyed us mentally. How do you know that these Egyptian Negroes are wicked as hell? That they, that they hate, the, the, that, that what they're against is the laws of the Most High. How do you know that for a fact? That it's, that it's not simply because they want to quote unquote bring out truth. Like they're trying to convince our, they're trying to convince our people. Oh, it's about debating and, and let the truth come to the surface. <laughs> you bunch of you bunch of ignoramuses. There's only one truth on the on the planet Earth, the Bible. There's no debate. The Bible wins. Everything else is garbage. That's, right. That's the bottom line. I ain't debating with nobody that is dumb as hell. Talking about debating. There's no debate. But to my question, how do you know that it is that their so-called uh, Inquiry is not uh, about bringing the truth to the top, as they say. How do you know? I want to ask somebody. Do y'all understand my question? 
Do you who who understands my question? Well, let me get Bezalel. Give him the microphone. How is it that you know that their thing is not about truth per se? Because it's about show. They want to debate on a book they claim they don't even believe in. Okay. It's just to put on a show. The Bible right. calls them scoffers. That's all they are. Right. Exactly. Uh, Jonah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to give it back to you. I can't answer. Okay. What are we teaching? Oh, laws. Is this detrimental to our people or is it beneficial? The laws that we've been going over in this Bible, will they help our people or will it destroy them? Are you telling your people to love your, love your brothers as yourself, take care of your wives, your children, build your houses? All of the stuff that we're reading in here is for moral benefit, for psychological benefit, for the, bene for the, bitter, the uh, benefit and the betterment of the whole nation. What, right, what so-called pro-black person is going to be against that? Y'all understand what I'm saying? So why would they be against what we're talking about? Because they are against God. That's why I'm bringing that out. It's got nothing to do with seeing the nation rise. Because there's nothing detrimental about what we read. Nothing. Our people are in a complete destroyed state. And this is the only thing that can get them out of there. And then for you to have a so-called Negro call himself knowing something that's going to be against this and trying to find ways to, to, uh, to debunk this, you got the devil on you. Good, Elder. Exactly. Psalms 50 and 16. The Bible is not the book of the white man. Psalms chapter 50 and verse 16. But unto the wicked, God... Stop. But unto the wicked. Give me the precept on the wicked. Give me the precept on the wicked. Huh? Okay, I like Malachi 1 and 4. Give me that, Isaac. Give me that. Malachi chapter 1 and verse 4. Whereas Edom say, Edom, go right back there again, Edom. We are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, they shall build, but I will throw down. And they shall call them the border of wickedness. So the Bible names them. Edom is the border of wickedness. Now Job 9.24. In case that, might, that verse might be too hard for a Negro, an Afrocentric Negro. You got to take, take them through all kinds of steps about Edom and all that. Let's get to the point. Job 9, 24. Job 9, verse 24. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. He covereth the faces of the judges thereof. If not, where and who is he? The Bible says the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. Now you got to ask a dumb Negro Afrocentric, who is ruling the earth? He can't be that stupid that he's going to think Africa's ruling the earth. I hope he ain't that stupid. You know what he well, just he, he might be that stupid because if he don't even know who he is, here the Bible is telling you who, who came over here on the slave ships. So he, he could be that dumb. He might be. China ain't ruling the earth. India ain't ruling the earth. A Negro ain't ruling the earth. Read it again, Isaac. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. So once you identify who's ruling the earth, you know who the wicked is. That's the so-called white man. He is ruling the earth. He dominates the United Nations building. He runs everything. Back to Psalms 50 and 16. Psalms chapter 50 and verse 16. But unto the wicked, God saith, what hast thou to, to declare my statutes? But unto the wicked, the Most High saith, what? What hast thou to do to declare my statutes? What does that mean? It means God hates them reading the Bible. Oh, maybe I studied. I'm going to say it again. It means God hates them reading his word, the Bible. Read it again, Isaac. But unto the wicked, God saith, what hast thou to do to declare my statutes, or that thou shouldest take my covenant in thy mouth? So God is totally against them, reading his Bible, taking his covenant in their mouth. Why? He destroyed us in slavery. Is that right or wrong? That's right. That's right. Murdered us. Then built, had the audacity to build churches and courthouses and say, God bless America. Are you kidding me? Then you got white Christians say, America needs to return to God. Hello? When was, was America ever dealing with God? 
What part in history did I did I miss a decade? Did I miss a century? <laughs> they missed this. Read it again. Verse 16. But unto the wicked God say, What hast thou to do to declare my statutes? Or that thou shouldest take my covenant in thy mouth. Now he's going to explain why they shouldn't read his Bible or take his covenant in their mouth. Read. Seeing though, seeing no. thou hatest instruction and casteth my words behind thee. So verse 17 gives you the reason God don't want them reading his word or taking his covenant in their mouth. He says, seeing thou hatest instruction and cast my words behind thee. So the white man hates instructions and he hates and he casts God's words behind him. So the Lord said, why, why are you reading my Bible? Why, why are you taking this in your mouth? The white man wrote the Bible. Are you kidding me? <coughs> Read. When thou sawest a thief, then thou con consentest with him and hast been partaker with adulterers. Thou givest thy mouth to evil and thy tongue frameth deceit. So the Most High is telling you the attributes of the wicked the attributes of Edom and why they should not be reading his book should not be even holding his records in, the, in their hands. Then they sell the Bibles for everybody. This right here proves the Bible ain't for everybody. Are you kidding me? Psalms 55 and 20. The book of Psalms, chapter 55 and verse 20. He hath put forth his hands against such as be at peace with them. The white man has put forth his hands with such as be at peace with him. When he came to the Americas, where the Indians, uh, uh, the so-called Indians, were they trying to fight this man as soon as they came over? No. no. Abiel, give me the picture with Atahualpa. Right. That's Atahualpa. And when they were conquering the Indians, uh, throughout South America, they were forcing Christianity on them. They said, you accept this, we'll give you an easy death. They got rid of all the kings, all those who had learning and education. They said, y'all gotta realize how this white man strategically destroyed us. Remember, it was not just, just one slave ship that came over. I need y'all to think for a second. Just bear with me a second. I want y'all to see that when they're killing the people here, these were the, the kings, what they call the caciques. Okay, the leaders, when the slave ships came over, listen good to what I'm saying. Remember, we could not read in history. We're all familiar with that, that part of history, right? Okay, here's my question. When we came off the ships, could we read? Yes, the answer is yes. We were not dummies when, remember the first ships came from Spain, the last ones came from Russia, the middle ones came from Africa. Those were the educated ones. They could not so much break them, um, break them, what they use them for. Breeding purposes. Breeding. I want you to listen good. If you have a king or men of authority, leaders, well educated, you cannot allow them around the regular slaves. What's going to happen? There's going to be a revolt. You have to keep them separated. Wait, keep them separated. Wait till this group have out, the educated group have outlived their breeding purposes. And they use them to break, spiritually break the other ones, like we saw in the movie um, when Kunta was on a tree limb. Remember? They had to break his spirit so that the rest and roots, thank you, would fall, fall in line. That's what they did with the leadership that was coming over on ships, the educated ones. That's what they did here throughout the Americas when they killed the kings, the leadership, to break the rest. Then the youth that was being brought up, they said, don't allow them to read or write. Don't teach them. So we grew up perfect slaves, uneducated, perfect slaves. That's what, they, this white man did a trick bag on us. But the most I got them in a trick bag, cause there is a God. Psalms 55 again, and 20. Psalms 55 and verse 20. He hath put forth his hands against such as be at peace with them. He hath broken his covenant. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter. You know why the words of his mouth were smoother than butter? Because they came preaching peace, came preaching the love of Jesus. Come on. Christianity. But Christianity, right. But war was in his heart. But war was in his heart. 
A lot of y'all get in arguments about Islam. Let me tell you, the most bloodiest religion is Christianity. I'm going to say it again. The religions that your mothers and your fathers are in is the most brutal and bloodiest religion, Christianity. Who can explain that? Who knows historically? Who can help us? Yes. I want something after. I want something all people know about. Crusades, mm, a lot of that crusades was us. I want to go slavery time. I already gave you a hint right there. Nobody knows? Jump. The transatlantic slave, the transatlantic slave trade and um, all the South American slaves that they had down there. Exactly. So and when you, ex when you explain, you gotta, don't just say slave. How did they get them to become slaves? There was war, there was bloodshed. When you read about the, look at this. You can't just leave it at, oh, they were slaves. Look, I'm uh, going quick, I can't even see what I'm looking at. Look what they did. The mother there with the baby, um, Malachi, can you point to the baby on the umbilical cord? Is that a rope around the baby's neck? Come on, the left. Around the baby's neck. They're baptizing the baby right there. They're feeding the other babies to the dogs. These are Christians. These are Christians that your mothers and your fathers worship. These are the most bloodiest people on the face of the earth. Can I stand upon that picture? Go ahead. That picture right there, a woman hung herself. She refused to be Christianized or enslaved or raped, so she hung herself. But before she hung herself, she hung her baby on her leg. And then the white man came and baptized it anyway. While well, I was dead, that's what she was doing. And they fed the babies to the dogs. And the rest of the babies to the dogs. Babies, one, 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 one right. right. Let's go to the next picture. These are your Christians. Let's get some more. soldier back there. Look, I'm down. Right. Come on, next picture. Okay, look at They're about to chop off the, the feet. Look at the fires that they point to the missing hands. They got their hands chopped off. And noses for not bringing gold. That was the punishment that the Christians, the good old Jesus worshipers, which is really Caesar Borgia. See. The book of Revelation, chapter 13 and verse 15. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast. Can you give me the image of the beast, Abiel? Pull up the image of the beast. Because somebody right now is thinking, a monster with nine heads is the image of the beast. No. Let's get the image of the beast. Okay, that's the image of the beast. Caesar Borgia. Painted by Leonardo da Vinci during the Renaissance. Followed by Michelangelo. Okay. They painted the royal family of the Pope's family as Jesus. Caesar Borgia. Look at the color the devil is. Look at that. He ain't even ready to get him brown. This is what they put over throughout the Americas. A lot of them got these images. Like there's a famous one with the devil fighting Michael. And the devil is brown skinned. And they put it over the baby's cribs. So when, that's why a lot of our Latin brothers, as soon as they wake up as a baby, they see a brown devil. No, a brown, what is it? Yes, a brown white, devil. A black, devil, black devil. With a white, white angel. With a white angel killing them. They go, oh, the devil's bad. Black is bad. Brown is bad. That's why I met a Panamanian brother. Black is me talking about he's white. I said, are you insane? He said, no, I'm white. I said, you're stupid. That's what you are. Okay, give me some more pictures. Right there, right there, those pictures right there, right there. Caesar Borgia was the second son of Pope Alexander VI of Rome. Leonardo da Vinci used that family to paint as the whole holy images, quote unquote, holy images. Okay. So read that again, Isaac. Revelation 13, verse 15. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast. Wait! Go back to Caesar. Pull back up to Caesar. Now that's Caesar Borgia. Now give me so-called Jesus. Hmm. So now, who's 
That's still Caesar, but whose life did they give that image? They gave him the life of Christ. They say, no, 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 that's Jesus. But in reality, it's Caesar Borgia. So the life, when it says they had power to give life unto the image of the beast, they had power, why? Because they conquered everybody. And they gave us this image and said, that's Jesus. That's Jesus Christ. Come on, Isaac. That the image of the beast should both speak. Stop. Go now. Get me up. Uh, Isaac. I mean, not Isaac. Abiel. Come on, man. Forget all that. Forget that, Abiel. Go pull up Passion of the Christ or uh, pull up the movie. Um, what is it? King of Kings. That's the one I want. King of Kings. Revelation 13, verse 15. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast. That the image of the beast should both speak. That's what we want. That the image of the beast should both speak. A lot of you in your Christian lying religions go, well, I don't understand how the image of the beast speaks. We're going to show you an example right here. Turn up the volume. And God find me. Image of God. And not burnt offering. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah. There you go. Turn it, turn it up. <laughs> but this is how the image speaks in their movies, their plays. He's speaking. Is it not you who should baptize me? Why do you ask me this? <laughs> That's enough. I can't take no more. I can't take it no more. You know, we were talking about what, what you know what that does? If y'all notice a lot of Christians, I'm talking about black and Latin Christians. You ever notice how there, a lot of them are very effeminate? Yeah. <laughs> That's be, I'm going to tell you why. Remember we were speaking earlier about your, uh, uh, how Esau knows about images. These images put, put something in our people's minds to be passive and effeminate, especially amongst the men. Why? Because they watch these movies and they go, that's, that's how a Christian is supposed to be, passive and effeminate. So they take on that nature. But that, that was difficult to sit through that thing, man. Exactly. That thing was, that was traumatizing. It's like eating glass. Yeah. That thing was traumatizing. Isaac, read that again. So now we have a better understanding of this scripture right here. Revelation 13 verse 15. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak. So now we see how the image speaks through their movies, through television, through the media. Like, uh, now get me, um, find me TBN, what's the name of that thing? In Hollywood, in uh, California? That's the, thing. the Holy Land. I want to beat that dude up. In Florida, thank you. I want to I wanna pay, get, get some money and go through there. And then hit him upside the head with a Bible. Pfft. I know he's gonna throw me out, but that's alright. <laughs> Holy Land. Do they have any, uh, Abby? Are there any video clips of the Holy Land? There gotta be. We want him talking. Right. Right there. Right there. You got black women all across America going here, talking about I oh, just love him as Jesus. He oh he Jesus Jesus on my mind. <laughs> And experience is actually an experience. It's a venue where we have these lovely, beautiful buildings patterned after Jerusalem and for about 300 years. There's a mix of architecture here. And people think that maybe they'll come here and walk around and look at the buildings, and it's very nice. And that's true. But the real part of the Holy Land experience is contained within the venues where we have productions that are all biblically based and that provide inspiration uh, for life, all drawn from the Bible, all with our cast members and everybody that assists. Rise, look around you, look! Every show is different. I think it's designed, and each day seems to have a different uh, tone, depending on the guests that are into that day. Passion dramas. My favorite. I mean, I obviously enjoy that because that's that's what we do. I mean, that's what we've been doing for years, and that's the whole plan of salvation, the death, burial, the resurrection. That's why we're, that's why we're doing it.
calling in your life, come check it out. Be encouraged. And maybe use your gifts and talents for what you've been designed for your spiritual freedom. Don't just come to look at the beauty of the Holy Land, but come for an experience. And wherever you are in your life's journey, whether you're uh, a person that's looking for answers, whether you're a person with trouble and pain, whether you're a person on a day out, whether you're just coming with your friends, family and children, there is something here at the Holy Land that can inspire you, um, refresh you, and even help you to make a change in your life or experience something new in your life which will be a great benefit. Uh, there's scripture that he read that he should give life unto the image of the beast. You, that, that you would just read, read that statement again. Revel that Revelation 13 verse 15. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast. And he had power to give life, the life of Jesus to the image of the beast. So when you see the image of the beast, you don't see him as the image of the beast. Right. You see him as Jesus. Right. Then that's, and the proof of that is if when you, like we was on the street and we held up the image of the beast with the name written at the top mm -hmm. saying image of the beast. You know what the little kid said? That's Jesus. That that was horrifying. I got another to see one that thing. I'm that was gonna horrifying. Show, let me show you this. They what? said, wait a minute, wait. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. They did not recognize that that was literally Caesar. They don't see Caesar at all. And that's exactly who it is. They don't even know who Caesar Bogier is, and they're looking at his picture every time we show it. You're looking at Caesar Bogier there, because that's the image of it, because all of the images follow that model. So you can understand, they all have them looking like that, with the long hair, looking like Charles Manson. You understand? They always get that type of character to play to Jesus. Okay, so when they look at that, they don't say that that's Caesar Bogier. They say that that's Christ. That's exactly what the scriptures say. They gave, so you can understand, they gave Caesar Bogier the life of Christ. Right. In other words, identity theft. Exactly. Now, you ever hear people say, when you show them that image, and you ask, especially black women, no offense, but especially black women, you say, who's that? And she'll say, nobody knows who that. I don't know who that is. That's just a man. You ever hear them say that in camps? Yeah. yeah. I'm going to show you, yeah, they, it, the, the devil, I told y'all, our people got the devil in them. One black woman said, we don't know who that is, that, that's anybody, that's just a man. She had a little uh, daughter with her. So I turned to the little kid, I said, who's that? She said, Jesus. I said, who taught you that, my mama? I said, see, you're a black devil right there. Our people are devils. They have the devil, and they will lie at the drop of a dime. If they see you about to corner them, they'll lie. Oh, no, nobody knows who that is. They know, all right, or change topic. They know they in their house, the picture you showed them is on their wall in their house. But she'll lie and say, nobody knows who that image is. Who is that? You ask the child. Child will tell you the truth. That's, that's Jesus. My mama told me that's Jesus. You black you know the devils. Why the, you know the reason why the child told the truth? Because the child has, did not put into play what is known as a defense mechanism. That's a psychological term. You with me, Captain Yashman? Yep. The, the, the defense mechanism protects protects the ego from getting torn up. Protects the lies. Protects the right. <laughs> it protects them. They don't want to have that image smashed, so they'll they'll come up with a defense to block it. Right. But a child wasn't didn't, wasn't taught that, so they right. just said the truth. Yeah. I'm gonna give you another one. <laughs> them damn stinking Jehovah Witnesses on Eastern Parkway, who wake people up early in the morning. You just want to throw a bucket of hot grits on them. They <laughs> don't do that, nobody. I'm just teasing. Um, they'll say, I'll say, uh, uh, what color is Jesus? Here come the lie again from the black woman. Nobody knows who. My mother-in-law, my mother-in-law, liar that she is. She's a black devil. She lie at the drop of a dime. I'm talking to the woman. She says, nobody, nobody knows what Jesus looks like. I said, really? I said, do you show what Jesus looks like? No, nobody knows. We don't even. You can't. Have, there's no images of. Jesus. Really? Can I see one of your comic books, please? What do you mean, comic books? Your comic book. Because that's what it is. Hand me one. Let's open it now. Let's flip through the pages. Oh, who's this? And that image will pop up. Bing! So you lied. You've been lying from the beginning of the conversation. <laughs> and now they're crawling, looking for a rock to crawl under. They're a bunch of lies. Our people got the devil in them. I, I did that to a Jehovah Witness, a so-called Jehovah Witness one time, and it got so bad, she said she had to go to the bathroom. Oh, there you go right there. <laughs> they will have 
these comic books and lie to your face and say nobody knows what Jesus looked like. Then why you got him like that? Then in your comic books and you push it throughout. You don't see this in white communities. You could go to Howard Beach. You won't see these Jehovah Witnesses over there. They all in black and Latino communities. Oh, Jehovah Witness. These are their comic books and they push that doctrine. They got headquarters in Brooklyn. That watchtower. They said 144,000 lives there. Oh. The hell that is. Look at this. Follow the Christ. See, that's why you gotta, you gotta just shut, our people gotta get shut down. All these lies they come with. Yes, I am. Who got the mic? Uh, Blair Underwood brought that out a while back too when he said that Christ was black and it was a big controversy. He was on a Phil Donahue show. Right. And the white people was calling. It didn't matter what color Christ was, but as soon as they said he was black, it was a problem. It was a problem. Remember in Brooklyn, there was a play in the 90s about a black Jesus. They burned the theater down. They burned it down. Then they get on the news and say, it doesn't matter what color Jesus is. Y'all let these white people fool y'all if y'all want. It does matter. Like, like the Bible says, that thought of every one of them is deep. I'm going to show you how deep their thoughts are. If Jesus is black, the white man's mind already goes, okay, we put all black people in slavery. Latin people too. What? <laughs> is Jesus going to do when he returns? That's how they think. They think quick. But black and Latin, Latin people, we're slow to the thought. We're like, huh? It don't matter what color he is. You don't know. Just shut up. Fall in line and repent. Most black people are white people with black skin. So you can understand. They've been made, they've been made white inside. Because they only do nothing but parrot what the man told them. That's it. Exactly. Read that again, Isaac. So, uh, Revelation. Revelation 13 verse 15 and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast so he had power why did he have power because he conquered everybody why did he have power he has missile technology nobody gonna start going to tell us man he's wrong so he gave life to the image of the beast the image of the beast is Caesar Borgia who they got portrayed as Jesus go ahead that the wait let me read this uh, Abiel just printed here, pulled this out. It says, Caesar Bourget briefly employed Leonardo da Vinci as military architect and engineer between 1502 and 1503. Caesar and Leonardo became intimate instantly. Y'all know what intimate means, right? Homos. They became homos instantly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Read that again, Isaac. <laughs> Revelation 13, verse 15. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak. Now we know how the image speaks. Read. And cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast. Whoever would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Should be killed. Those were the images we just showed you, Abiel, back again with Atahualpa. When they put his images before our forefathers and foremothers. They murdered us if we did not worship it. This is historic. The Bible is historic. What we call prophecy has now become our history on many instances like this one. Read it again, Isaac, in its entirety. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Now I'm going to tell you something. Christianity Christianity is white supremacy. That's all Christianity is. It's white supremacy. You, you got, that's why on a, they're fighting between Islam and Christianity because the so-called white man is a racist. He is a white supremacist. That's his nature. That's how he is. That's why his religions are all based on white supremacy. You'll never see a white man put out a movie with a black Christ or a black anything holy. They'll burn the theater down. They'll burn the theater down. They said even in their love scenes. You'll see a love scene between a black woman and a white man. Then you see one with a black man and a black woman. The black man and the black woman's love scene on TV is like this. It's real quick. You don't really see nothing. But the image they show with the white man and the black woman, like that movie Scandal, that's out. They say those are some of the most hottest and seductive scenes. Why? It's all mental. 
Why? So that women will look and go, oh, the white man. Oh, he's, he's a hunk. Look, ooh, look at him go, girl. Ooh. It's all subliminal suggestion. They gave that broad an Academy Award, didn't they? For, for doing that thing. And he's, oh, I thought I'm talking about something totally different than you, y'all, so. No, I'm not saying you got I'm talking about scandal. No, no. Oh, I'm talking about something different than y'all. They talk about Monster Ball with Halle Berry and the e, what's the Edomite she was back in Billy, Billy Bob Thornton. That scene right there, that was a real scene. Yeah. That, 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 that was not acting. Right, that movie right there. Where her son died, he was, a, he was overweight, he had candy balls under the pillow and dropped dead from a heart attack. Jesus came. <laughs> and then a white demon, Jesus came and, and made love to her, had sex with her. She said, make love to me, make love to me. What the hell is this? These are the images they put throughout their movies, and you got your young daughters watching this, and then your daughters go, white man's a hunk, I don't want no black man. That movie Scandal was, was a spinoff of this here, because once they dropped that, then they just put all those kind of movies out there, with these love scenes with, with our women loving this damn cracker. Sadie. Sadie. Exactly. Come here, Sadie. Isaac, did you read the whole verse? Yes, sir. Read it again. Verse 15. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak, and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. So I made a statement. I said Christianity is white supremacy. Christianity is white supremacy. Give me Micah 2 and 1. Micah 2 and 1. I'm going to take an answer. Come on. Micah 2, verse 1. Woe to them that devise iniquity. Woe to them that devise iniquity, meaning sins, evil. Go ahead. And work evil upon their beds. And work evil upon their beds. What is God prophesying about here through Micah? He's prophesying how the white man, when he goes to sleep, he's thinking of evil. He's plotting and devising evil. Read. When the morning is light, they practice it. When the morning is light, they practice the evil that they thought about upon their beds, that they counseled about. Read. Because it is in the power of their hand. Why? Because they are ruling the earth. Can nobody on the planet earth stand up against America? Israel. Any of the European countries. You have no power to overthrow them. Was that it, Isaac? Yes. Sir. Go to Second Ezra now, chapter 11 and 40. Christianity, I'm going to say it again. We got to start putting that out there. Christianity is white supremacy. Christianity is a racist religion. Don't be scared about it. Because guess what? As soon as you say Christ is black, with scriptural evidence, what they say about you? You're a racist. And you got the Bible proof. Are you kidding me? Second Ezra 11 and verse 40. And the fourth came and overcame all the beasts that were past. Meaning the fourth kingdom upon earth, which was Rome, and America is an extension of ancient Rome. Read. And had power over the world with great fearfulness and over the whole compass of the earth with much wicked oppression. That's where all these black revolutionary groups rise up. They cannot overthrow this man. This man has missile technology. This man has ICBM missiles. What you gonna do? You gonna go to the white man and buy a gun? Are you stupid? Can I buy one of your guns so I can shoot you? Mm. Nigga, black people are stupid as hell. I'm talking about you Latinos too. Don't exclude yourself. I mean no negro. I'm talking about you too. Dumb as hell. <laughs> Read it again. And the fourth came and overcame all the beasts that were past and had power over the world with great fearfulness and over the whole compass of the earth. The Bible says this country, America, an extension of Rome, has power over the whole earth. So what is a Negro or a Latino with an Uzi going to do? Nothing but get yourself annihilated. Yep. Go ahead. With much wicked oppression. With much wicked oppression. I'm going to put two names on that much wicked oppression. Christianity and democracy. Yep. Those are the two main things this man uses to oppress the earth. Read. And so long time dwelt he upon the earth with deceit. He dwelt with what? Dwelt he upon the earth with deceit. Christianity. Democracy. That's the deceit he's ruling and living upon the earth with. Read. For the earth has thou 
not judged with truth. The earth has this man not judged with truth. God's law. They have not, they have not judged this earth with God's law. So, you get, uh, pull up for me, pull up for me, uh, G-E, G, type in G-E crops. Because you see all the starvation throughout India. In, in, in India, they stupid as hell. They are starving and you will have a 400 pound cow walk by. I'll eat that thing. They talking about praising some guy. Are you kidding me? Give me a, I, I want a website. Yeah, they said that might be their uncle. Don't eat it. Um, let me guess. Let me, I'm taking a guess. <laughs> Let me see the first one, Abiel. Yeah. Okay, put the pause right there. The white man in his science, get me, um, get me, I want first, get me Daniel 12 and I think it's four, thank you. Daniel 12 and four, then I want first Timothy six and 20. You see all, now listen, as Israel, we are no fan of the other nations. Let me put that out there now. Because somebody will think, oh, you only, you just against the white man. No, we against the Africans. Let me word it this way. God is against all nations. God is against not just the white man, the Africans, the Arabs, the East Indians, the Chinese, the Japanese. He's against all the nations. Why? Because all nations had a hand in our downfall. That's why. So now, when we are set back in power, which is soon to come, let's listen good. We, it's going to be our job to judge the earth in righteousness. 1 Corinthians 6, so we shall the saints so what? Judge the world. world. Y'all forgot that already? We're going to judge the world. It ain't always going to be uh, death and slavery. It's going to be slavery, but some nations are going to be, be released from their hard bondage, and some nations will be put to death. That's going to be their judgment. This nation here will be released, whereas this nation over here will not. Let me prove what I just said. Hold on. Give me Joel 3. Because some of y'all looking at me strange now. You got Ithan mumbling over here. I don't know what you're talking about over here. I'm going to show y'all. Some nations will be released and some will not. Start at Joel 3 and 6. I'm going to show you. When we are set up and established under God Almighty and His Son Christ. <laughs> Watch this. Joel chapter 3 verse 6 The children also of Judah mm -hmm. and the children of Jerusalem have he sold unto the Grecians. So the white man the Arabs and the African, I mean the Africans and the Arabs got together and sold us to the white man, the Greeks. Read that he might remove them far from their border. That we might that they might remove us far from our border. So again, the Africans and the Arabs sold the children of Israel to the Greeks, the white man. That's Bible prophecy. Watch this. Read. Behold, I will raise them out of the place where ye have sold them. That's, he's raising us up now. We're being raised up spiritually now. But there's going to come a physical deliverance soon. Watch. Read. And will return your recompense upon your own head. What those nations did to us, God said it's going to be the big payback. That's what God is saying. Read. And I will sell your sons. Uh oh. And I will sell your sons. And your daughters. And your daughters. Into the hand of the children of Judah. Come on. And they shall sell them to the Sabians. Wait, 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 wait. Let's, that's what kind of fast there. Read that again. Let's, let's meditate on that. Read that again. And I will send, and I will sell your sons. I will sell your sons. And your daughters. And your daughters. Into the hand of the children of Judah. So Judah's going to get them. Come on. And they. And they. Shall sell them. Shall sell them. The white man. The, to, these certain African groups. Certain Arab groups too. To the Sabians. Sabians is a relative to the Ethiopians. Mm -hmm. So that's showing you. There's going to be different judgments on different nations. That's what I want all y'all to see. Right, they gonna, we going to trade them. They're going to be our stocks. That's the prophecy. Read it again. I want it to marinate in our people's heads. And I will sell your sons and your daughters into the hand of the children of Judah. And they shall sell them to the Sabians. Mm. 
to a people far off. For the Lord hath spoken it. Who spoke that thing? For the Lord hath spoken so it. So we can't change Bible prophecy. I want y'all to understand that. Negroes are so dumb, they will read this and they will think that the ones being sold is them. <laughs> That's how backwards these dumb people are in church. They'll exactly. actually read this and say, oh damn, we're going to be sold. Mm -hmm. Stupid as hell. Exactly. These churches are worse than crack. I'm telling you, they're, mm -hmm. they're worse than crack. Exactly. Uh, Isaac, what did I tell you to go before? Daniel 12. Watch this, Daniel 12 and 4. Is it 4 I want? I'm not looking at it. It's 4. Okay, come on. Daniel 12 verse 4. But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the end. This is how we know this is the time of the end. The Bible says seal up the book. Let the understanding cease from the earth until the time of the end. That's why now Israelites is waking up. The book is being unsealed. We're understanding now. Come on. Many shall run to and fro. And knowledge shall be increased. See that part right there? Knowledge shall be increased. When you look at America from the time, remember they had the, they came up with the technology of the railroad, the industrial revolution. From there they had uh, planes and uh, planes with the Wright brothers. Um, from the time of the late 80s, they had cell phones. Remember when watches were a big deal? The, uh, Casios, those uh, electronic digital watches. The cell phones, remember they started off with just beepers? Then it went from beepers to those big omni, uh, omni telephones. Now they got phones in the watch. They got all, technology is growing and increasing. Now, in 69 when they went to the moon, now it's, they're, e they're able to go, to go back and forth. Quicker and easier now. They're able to send satellites far past the moon. They got satellites to Mars. Venus, Jupiter, knowledge, that's the prophecy, knowledge shall be increased. Now watch this, 1 Timothy 6 and 20. 1 Timothy 6 and verse 20. You got Negroes talking about science. You Egyptologists don't know nothing about science. Read. O Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust, avoiding profane and vain babblings and oppositions of science. Falsely so-called. And oppositions of science. The word opposition means to be against. Opposing what? The word of God. Now I'm going to talk about Esau's technology has been, his knowledge has been increased. He has science. Go back to GE. 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 Genetically modified food. Who can tell me about their genetically modified foods? Anybody know anything? Bezalel. What the scientists are doing is they're taking things like um, tomatoes and combining them with um, the DNA of salmon, so that way the tomatoes endure cold weather. Mm -hmm. Here they said they took uh, plums and genetically engineered them to resist plum pox. So basically, they're doing an abominable thing by mixing the, the DNA of the fruits and vegetables with antibiotics, other creatures' DNAs, mm -hmm. and making them completely unlawful. Right, let me tell you about these foods. These foods are impervious to cold. These foods grow faster and larger, these foods, now you might say, well, what's wrong with that? Africa need food. Let me tell you what they're doing in Africa with this. When they, when they plant these seeds and things, and these things grow, it destroys what they call the topsoil. So what does that mean though? You can't grow nothing after that. It's done, the soil is finished. You gotta dig like 50 feet under, 100 feet to get fresh soil because the soil is destroyed after that year's use. They're doing it in India and throughout Africa. That's why many of them Africans trying to get the hell out of there. Those lands, India and Africa, are, are fertile lands, but not no more. The white man put his science over there, destroying whole lands over there. Oh, the white man's such a hunk. That's why what we read in, read, go back to Maccabees. I want you to understand what, I mean, 2nd Ezra, uh, what was we reading? 2nd Ezra 11, 40 and 41. And I got to believe what God is saying to you. Because we're stuck on American television and... The, on what was that movie? Uh, not the Canary Effect. Um, the, end of the end of poverty. They said one nuclear missile. What? Who remembers what they said in the movie? The money that it costs to build one nuclear missile can end world poverty. But America ain't interested in that. They get millions of these missiles that cost billions upon billions of dollars. They said the cost of one 
could end world poverty, could end world starvation, could end world hunger. Now, let's see what God says again in 2 Ezra 11 and 40. 2 Ezra chapter 11 and verse 40. And the fourth came and overcame all the beasts that were past and had power over the world with great fearfulness. With great fearfulness. Everybody fears this man. Read. And over the whole compass of the earth. This man, the so-called white man, rules the whole compass of the earth. Read. With much wicked oppression. With much wicked oppression. Not love, brothers. Not love. With much wicked oppression. Much wicked oppression. They go into a land, they say, listen, we're going to help you grow crops. And all the Africans are going, ooga ooga ba, ooga 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 White man put his little seeds in there. The crops grow big and quick. Bang, bang, look at these crops. Oh, whoa. They eat and they eat and they eat. Now some of them growing third eyes on their back. The babies is growing with one leg shorter than the other. Now the crops is gone. Now they, they try to plant things, there's nothing growing. The white man is the devil. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Give me that now. Oh, they was putting out GE crops on that plate. How come these Egyptologists don't want to be these people? You ever notice that the five black people don't want to be them? They always want to be the pharaohs. No, Negro, you're going to be them. If you want anybody, you're going to be them. Oh, I don't want to be them, brother. I want to be pharaoh. Our people are sick. I want y'all to watch this part right here. Go to her back. We got to really start bringing this. this go back to that, Abia. Just type in KKK. Uh, anyone in prison? Brothers, sisters, these Ku Klux Klan members are your Christians. They are not Muslims. They are not Buddhists. These are your Christians. They are spreading Christianity and murdering us. The Ku Klux Klan is the only ones that came out and said, listen, we want to destroy them not only mentally, but physically. Burn them up. Get rid of them. But your, your middle-aged white woman in the school system, your middle-aged white boss and all that, they still got that mentality. Okay? You got it, Isaac? Come on. See, look, that's a dumb Negro for you right there. No, not that's blackface. It was on the right there, on the right. He's a dummy. Punch him in the face. Give me another one. Right there. That's a dummy right there. Uncle Ruckus. You know that, see, the scene after this, they strung the nigga up and dragged him behind their van. That's the before picture right there. Yeah, nigga, you can take a picture with us. Right. Isaac, you got that? Habakkuk chapter 3, verse, verse 14. Listen good to this. I want you to pay close attention to this. Thou didst strike through with his staves the head of his village. Now this is the return of Christ. This is prophecy about the black Messiah returning. Read. They came out as a whirlwind. The nations of the earth are going to come out as a whirlwind. Read. To scatter me. To scatter Christ. Their rejoicing was as to devour the poor secretly. Right there. Read that again. Their rejoicing. Their rejoicing was as to devour the poor secretly. Read it again. Their rejoicing was as to devour the poor secretly. All the plots and plans that this country has is to destroy us secretly. They will never come out and say, listen, we hate you, except the Klan. I ain't talking about the Klan. I'm talking about your Christians, your school educators. Their rejoicing is to devour us, destroy us secretly. That's why when you see, I talked about the GE, their food crop, genetically engineered foods. You look at that at face value and go, that's a good thing. Mm, that's meant to destroy us. Clones, cloning food, that's meant to destroy us. All these foods have side effects. That's why Ezekiel, read that in Ezekiel now, 413. This is why the prophecy says this. Now we can't do nothing about this. All we can do is pray to the most High to protect us. Watch this. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 4, verse 13. And the Lord said, 
Even thus shall the children of Israel eat their defiled bread among the Gentiles. Y'all see the prophecy? The prophecy is that we would eat our food defiled among the Gentiles. Yes, that includes your crops, because you got some vegans amongst us that go, oh, I'm good, but I don't eat clone foods. You're eating genetically engineered lettuce, tomatoes, cucumbers. That's what you're eating. So you're not escaping. Because you got some, a nigga trying to be clever. Well, I'm a vegan. I'm organic. You, you just dumb as the rest. Yeah. Right. All this stuff is, has side effects. Now, I said all that to say this. These foods are in conjunction. What, what's the name of the company that, that, that uh, authorizes the sale of these foods? The FDA, Food and Drug Administration. Why doesn't it just say Food Administration? Why is it Food and Drug Administration? Because those two companies work together. The food is meant, is genetically engineered to get you sick, then the drugs is there to finish you off. You come on, come get this. That's why all these new prescriptions got side effects, may cause ulcers, uh, may give you thoughts of suicide. Y'all don't hear these commercials? All that's from the FDA, the Food and Drug Administration will cause leakage, right? May cause women leakage. Some says it's one, one side effect is death. Right. I heard a side effect of death <laughs> may cause death. So, no, no, we laughing, but that's what Habak read Habakkuk again. I want this to, merit to soak in your brains. So these Egyptologists, these people that say the white man wrote the Bible, don't waste your time on them. They don't know nothing. The Bible is the guidebook. Read it, Isaac. Habakkuk 3, verse 14. Thou didst strike through with his staves the head of his village. Christ is going to destroy the villages, the cities of this man. Read. They came out as a whirlwind to scatter me. The nations of the earth are going to fight against Christ. Read. Their rejoicing was as to devour the poor secretly. Their rejoicing was to devour the poor secretly. I need that to marinate in your brains because some of y'all talk about, oh, I got some good wife. They, no, they're not bad. They, they, listen, we must be at peace with everyone. I know when you hear this truth, you, 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 like in a men's conference, we were talking, talking about when you first hear this truth, you're, you're angry, you're mad, and you want to go out and do something, but you can't. The Bible teaches us to be at peace in the lands of our captivity. Like it says in Jeremiah 29, uh, Romans 16, if at all possible, be at peace with all men. And at peace, we got to still have the mental faculties, the spiritual understanding that this whole system is designed to destroy us secretly. Y'all know about the drugs in the community? Y'all complaining about uh, who's the people that shot that uh, missile in Syria? Syria shot a missile. What, was, what happened? We looked at it a couple of weeks ago. They shot a missile again at the Arabs. Oh, nerve gas, nerve gas. Help nerve me out. Got nerve gas on Syria. They dropped. Nerve gas. Who dropped it? Uh, they say it was, uh, no, Syria dropped. They said Syria. They said the Syrians' own people. Right, that was it. Right. Thank you. They said Syria dropped nerve gas on their own people, and everybody in, in up in arms. What are you talking about? They said that's chemical warfare. Don't you know that crack, cocaine, it's chemical warfare? That's meant to destroy us. Cigarettes. Cigarettes, all that stuff is chemical warfare. It's meant to destroy us internally. That's what all that is. You talking about Syria? The hell is Syria? What about here at home? Then you got the here goes the black uh, conscious movement. We need. I'm a Garveyite. We need to. I'm a Pan Africanist. We need to go to and gather the Africa. Are you kidding me? You got your people that got off the same slave ship with you, brought through Mexico, Guyana, Brazil. Um, Puerto Rico, Santo Domingo, and you're talking about it. you running over there to Africa? You're insane. You're stupid. The Bible says, get, give me that Ezekiel 3 and 11, I think it is. This is who God said to gather. This is the remnant of the people that's going to change the world. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 3, verse 11. And go, get thee to them of the captivity. No, no, go get to the African, Isaiah. So go get to the African. Get thee to them of the captivity. The Bible says, get thee of the captivity. Get thee to them of the captivity. That's who our job is to gather. That's the remnant that's going to change. Give me Romans 8 now. 
Romans 8, I think it's 16. Is it 16? You know what I want. Romans 8, I want all creation. That one. Where is it? Romans, Romans 8, verse 19. Thank you. For the earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. So everything on the earth is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Why? Because God is going to instill us with his power to change and clean up this earth. And you're talking about gather Africans. What the hell? I, the Bible, give me that Psalms 82, ye are gods, that one. This is why everybody's waiting. Is it 82? 82 is and 6, thank you. Psalms 82, verse 6. I have said, ye are gods. The Bible says, ye are gods. Who are the gods? The Israelites on the earth are the gods. Read. And all of you are children of the Most High. Come on. But you shall die like men. We died like men in slavery when we broke God's commandments. We went from the God level to the man level and died. Go ahead. And fall like one of the princes. And fall like one of the princes of the earth. The Bible prophesies that we are greater than all the nations. Only the Israelites under God and Christ can change and fix this planet. You go through every other plan out there, voting, maybe if we get a United Nations, all that don't work. The only thing that can clean up this earth is the Israelites under God and Christ. That's our job. We were made for that purpose. So we're in a man's state. Now we're trying to come to the Godhood. Here come a Negro. Oh, don't read the Bible. That's the white man. Shut up. Be quiet. You don't know nothing. You looking at the outside of these weak, frail bodies we got. Give me Zechariah 12 now. Here's the prophecy. No, before that, give me 1 Corinthians 15. Is it 1 Corinthians 15? I want um, changed. 15 and... Bear with me a second. 51. 51. Yes, that's it. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. All Israel ain't going to stay asleep. Go ahead. But we shall all be changed. But all Israel that's, that shall be awoken shall be changed. Go ahead. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Y'all see that? We shall be changed. Read. For this corruptible. These weak bodies we got. Must put on incorruption. Must put on incorruption, read. And this mortal. This mortal bodies we got. Must put on immortality. We're going to be immortals upon the earth. Now, Zechariah 12. This is why we must be changed. Because a Christian will always read 1 Corinthians 15. And you're asking, change for what? Why do you need to be changed? Uh, so, uh, incorruption put on incorruption? Why? Why? Immortal? Mortal put on immortal? Why? Sister Johnson, why, Brother Bob? Well, nobody know that, brother. Nobody know. Zechariah 12. Zechariah 12, verse 7. The Lord also shall save the tents of Judah first, that the glory of the house of David and the glory of the inhabitants of Jerusalem do not magnify themselves against Judah. Here comes this is the part of 1, verse 8. In that day, Shall the Lord defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem? So don't worry about nuclear destruction. God's going to defend us. Go ahead. And he that is feeble among them. He that is feeble among them. Go ahead. At that day shall be as David. David could jump over walls. 15 foot walls. David took down giants. The scripture said David could bend still with his forearms. Read. And the house of David shall be as God. That's the elect. Shall be as God. God, the 144. The house of David, the elect, shall be as God. Read. As the angel of the Lord before them. That's why the Bible says we are his weapons, his battle axe, and weapons of war. It says no weapon formed against us shall prosper. That's why all these GE foods and all that, I ain't worried about it. Don't worry about it. Pray to, that's why it says pray over your foods and all that, like it says in Timothy. Pray to the Lord. He's going to protect us. The Lord got our back. 
if we stay on the right road, we stay in his word, we're going to do wonders. We shall do exploits. Like it says, another scripture says that in Daniel 11 too. The servants of God shall do exploits upon the earth. And we, right, and it says we shall boast ourselves. We ain't going to be all sad when we're smiting through the nations, coming against us with tanks. I can't wait for that day. That's why Lord said, don't worry. Give me that Job 5. We're almost done. Job 5. I, it just keeps popping in my head. Job 5. Is it around 12? Some of y'all know what I want. About their enterprises. 12. Thank you. Start at 11. Start at 11. Job 5 and verse 11. To set up on high those that be low. God said he's going to set up on high those that be low. We're the low. You don't get no lower than a Negro or Latino. The African, the smelly, dusty Africans come over here and do better than us. Every nation come over here and do better than us. We are the low race. Read it again. To set up on high those that be low. That's why I said our job is a high job. Our job is to fix the earth under Christ. That's why there must be order. That's why the parables we read like in Luke 19, he said, Well done, thou good and faithful servant, be thou Lord over ten cities. Ten cities in China, ten cities in Africa. It's your job to fix it. Clean it up. Why? Because you're going to be on the God level. Read. That those which mourn may be exalted to safety. We're the ones that mourn. We are the ones that mourn. The Bible says we may, that we may be exalted to safety. We're the ones with the plan because God has a program for us to follow. I was talking with Deacon Yalasop the other day about um, the spending of black America. There was a, a, a chart and it said on gifts alone. Now listen good. You know how our people complain about housing? I'm going to just deal with housing. Housing. We get the worst housing. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Yes, Blacks and Latinos get the worst housing. But then it, when you look up, I looked under Black America, Black in America is a magazine. It said on gifts, it had a whole chart, health care, all kinds of stuff. But this one said gifts. <laughs> gifts include Christmas and your birthday, that type of stuff. It said Black people annually spend $9.6 billion on gifts alone. You got, we got to start telling our people, niggas, shut up. You spend collectively $9.6 billion on gifts and toys and foolishness. Why don't you take your Christmas money, put it together, and start buying houses for yourselves? How about that? That's a plan. Build a school. You got $9.6 billion to spend. And you don't have a clue, but you're crying to the, to the white man, oh, we need better housing. You know, some, that's why it just calls us low. We don't think properly. We are some uneducated dummies. Even the ones that's in school. The black and Latinos that are educated are dumb as hell. Because you mean not one of them can sit down and say, hey, why don't we all get together the money that we spend on Christmas, keep our money, and invest it in buying houses? Real estate. Not one of them ever thought about that. You've got to be insane. Yes. Right. There you go right there. Thank you. Gifts. $9.6 billion on gifts alone. What's the top? What the top for that thing say? That's, and that was in 2009. Estimated expenditures by black households. Y'all see that? Can we find a black woman's hair care? Is there something on hair care or cosmetics? Cosmetics. I know it got to be something. Yeah. That, that, well, PlayStation Where is it? Look at contributions. That's what they give to the church. Seventeen point three billion dollars. Seventeen point three billion. Y'all see that? That's so. As we come back, brothers and sisters, I want y'all to listen good. We we must. We have personal care products. Seven point four billion. That's why the Koreans love them. The Koreans love them! We, we, sent our, we sent our children to school. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Blacker Woman. You sent all of my kids to school. Thank you. And, she said, and, and at the same time, they said, and your kids go to jail. Exactly. Yes. Oh, who was going to say? Go ahead. Elder, uh, the new figures just came out from last year. Mm. America spent alone, everybody together, this is all the nations together, spent. 
41 billion dollars on Black Friday. Mm. It was so successful that the retailers are opening up. At the, you know how I usually uh, do it right after Thanksgiving, 12 o'clock door buses. Not anymore. Now they have Gray Thursday. Mm. Y'all see so I like that. They'll Gray. be open all day through Thanksgiving, right up into the night. Mm. And imagine if we would just yeah, keep we, our money amongst our own people. There's nothing we can't do. We just read earlier, brothers and sisters, God found out all the ways of knowledge and gave it to who? Jacob. So we got the, the, the answers is here. We just got to be motivated and do what God commands us to do. Like in Jeremiah 29. Give me that Jeremiah 29. We're going to start dealing with these things. 29, what verse is it? Eight, somewhere around there. Give me that, give me that, give me that. Great Thursday. Thursday. What the man is saying is that the, the, the time period for Black Friday, we need more hours. The Negroes got more money. They got more money. We need to make another day to get some more money. Right. So Great Thursday. You know what that's, we just read that their rejoicing was to devour the poor secretly. Y'all don't realize all these sales and all that is to devour us secretly. To take our monies from us so that they can build up their homes, their houses, their communities, send their kids to school, get an education, and we're poor as hell. The worst housing, the worst health care, the worst education, we got the worst everything. It ain't because we broke, we're not broke. The, the, the stats show that we, our people got the money. Y'all remember I, uh, a while back I showed you that they had a, a the uh, gross national product of all nations, and the so-called Negroes came in as the ninth wealthiest nation on the planet Earth right. as, in terms of spending power. Negroes don't even represent a nation at all. They compared to the money that blacks spent to nations on this Earth. Right. That's now, not even nations, including Latinos. Right. Exactly. Just, just niggers. <laughs> you know, they took. They just took the spending money, the money that they spent in one year, and compared it to the spending power of nations on the planet. They got exactly. like a hundred and some odd nations in the United Nations. Mm -hmm. Black people in America came in as number nine, and we don't even have a toilet paper factory. Check that out, Isaac. You got it for me. Jeremiah twenty nine and verse four. Listen good. Listen good to this. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel. Unto all that are carried away captives, whom I have caused to be carried away from Jerusalem, Jerusalem unto Babylon. Build ye houses. So in captivity, God commanded us, build ye houses. Have shelter. Have places to live. Read. And dwell in them. And plant gardens. Gardens. That goes into agriculture. Know how to take care of yourself. Read. And eat the fruit of them. And eat the fruit of them. Read. Take ye wives. Take you wives. And beget sons and daughters. And have families. So, with you, you sit back, a Negro will go, well, how? How can we do this? Let me tell you how the so-called Jews do it. I tell a story all the time. The so-called Jews get together. And they put percentages of money in a bank. At the end of the year, the monies that they collect, they buy a house. Fully paid for. And they move a so-called Jewish family into it. The next year, they do it again for another family, and so on and so on. We have, our spending power is greater than theirs, and we can't do that? I'm going to tell you why we can't do that, because we hate each other. There you go. We're See, filled with envy, greed, that, and hatred. That's that Professor X. I was just getting ready to say that. That's it. I was just getting ready to say that. But guess what? It. You know what that means? In our repenting. Yep. In our repenting, there's so much we can do, and we're going to do it. But you officers, you captains, you soldiers must hold the line and set a good example for the younger brothers and new brothers coming in. There's nothing we can't do. Nothing we can't do. Exactly, because just like what you said is exactly what I was thinking. All of those numbers that we saw in there was each household themselves spending. And, it, and, and at the end of it, they tabbed it all together. Mm -hmm. But not two families went out and bought nothing together. Exactly. Because the, each family hate each other. Black folk you know, hate each other. Chinese do that. But, but they all and do East that. They all gather in one house. I would, right. Nobody moves out of the house until every individual gets their own home. Y'all never see that? Yep. I see a whole 20 of them in an apartment. They all work at the Chinese restaurant. And one year by year, they each get their own home. We can't We can't. I motivate. want y'all to understand. Exactly. I want y'all to understand what I was saying. All of those families that contributed to those high numbers, not 
two of them came together on a collective effort to buy anything. It was all individuals. Why? Because they hate each other. Right. In contrast to the point that, that the elder made about the Koreans and the other and the other so-called immigrants that come over, they know how to work together. Exactly. That's the reason why this Bible is so dangerous, because they know that if we ever get some sense of following this Bible, they're in trouble. Oh, yeah. we getting that? Uh, yeah, because the whole thing, what the elder bring out, it's not that we don't have the resource. No, I want somebody to pull out the spirit we need to build Israel. We saw the resource. What spirit do you think the elder is talking about? When he was mentioning all the nations do the same. It's the spirit we need. Brothers in the back. Start with a P. Your brotherly love. Patient. Oh, oh, patient. He said P. Patient. Oh. patient. Patient. That's what's wrong with our people. They don't have no patience. Scripture, the Bible says, how many going to be sealed? 144,000. I don't see 12,000 of Naphtali. I don't see 12,000. That don't mean that they ain't being sealed. And I pray that they are. But guess what? In the meantime, we must do what this Bible says. Give me that Psalm 50. Yashua, you're going to say something. Yeah. Psalm 50. You know what I want, Isaac? Set them in order. That one. The, yes. the, the other problem too is let's say we were to set these things up and have a supermarket and have a clothing store, whatever it might be. Right away, everybody don't want to pay. Well, we family. Can right. you give me a discount? You're right on that. Can you do that? Oh, it's wrong for you to charge me. Right. Listen, we ain't gonna gas nobody, but how do you think those, those communities support each other? That's right. The Jews only do, the so called Jews only do business with each other. That's they right. very rarely go outside of their community unless they have to. Right. And then what happens is, if they don't like that they're going out their community so much, they get said, all right, now we're gonna fulfill this thing. My position don't exist over there, so we're gonna make that store. We're gonna right. do that thing and we're gonna innovate because we're tired of going to the other nation. They keep the money circulating in the community, and it's not just them. It's all these, that's how the Hamites do it. Uh, Deacon Asaph talk about it. Mm -hmm. When they come and they start buying buildings and stuff like that. Right. A few of them get together and they start keeping the money within themselves, within themselves. That's how exactly. you gotta set it up. We exactly. as teachers have to understand that our people really have a real sick psychological problem. Yes. A spiritual problem. I'm a, and I'm not making, I'm not being funny about it. I'm dead serious. Our people are really sick. They're really sick. Sick. But they hate themselves. We hate ourselves, we hate our own people. Isaac, you got that? Yes, sir. Call it and read it. Psalms 50 and verse 20 to 21. Y'all know the scriptures very well. We read that. That's my, some of my favorite scriptures right here. Go ahead. Thou sittest and speakest against thy brother. The white man speaks against us. We're the worst of everything. We're the worst, we're the criminals of the earth. Go ahead. Thou slanderest thine own mother's son. Come on. These that's all, all, you know what that's called? Propaganda. Propaganda. Come on. These things hast thou done, and I kept silence. Thou thoughtest that I was altogether such in one as thyself. That's why they got white images of Jesus and God and the Israelites. Go ahead. But I will reprove thee. God said he will reprove Esau. Go ahead. And set them in order before thine eyes. Hear the prophecy? God said he's going to set the Israelites in order before their eyes. He didn't say set us in order in the kingdom. He says, set us in order before their eyes, meaning in their face. That's what we see. This is just the beginning of it. Beginning stages. This is grassroots, brothers. Grassroots. This is a challenge to, to the male species of our nation. That's right. That are called men. That means we have to operate like men. We have to accept the responsibility of men. You know what that means? That means the whole nation rides on what we do.